Hi there guys, DJ here from Reptiles and Centuries. In today's video we're going to discuss some of the aspects of how to breed your ball pythons. There's a lot of different factors that comes into play and in today's video we want to make the process of breeding ball pythons a lot easier for you guys. So let's go check it out. Okay guys, so like I mentioned in the intro, in today's video we're going to discuss how, the aspects of how to breed your ball pythons. So initially when I started off, I, over, I tried to overcomplicate the situation or the breeding um, cycle for myself and in actual all fairness, it isn't so hard. So in today's video, we're going to discuss the four main factors that I believe is important for your, uh, to breed your ball python and that will be weight, temperature, feeding and copulation. So let's go discuss that in detail. Okay guys, so we're going to start off the, the four main factors by discussing weight. So weight is one of the most important aspects when breeding your ball pythons. So when in terms of your females, the general rule of thumb typically in the ball pythons, to start off your female ball python is 1,500 grams. Over the years, I've actually seen it's more beneficial to weight a bit longer in terms of size and regarding your female. So the typical ideal weight I have for the females are between 1,500 grams and 1,800 grams. So for instance, here we've got an inchy leopard, desert ghost, double head for hyperclown female. And this is a great female to showcase you guys today in terms of when we start the females off generally. So as you guys can see, is it also goes about not just the weight of the animal, but the general condition of the snake itself. So as you guys can see, is this female is in good condition in the sense of she's got good girth, and good size onto herself. So this female is a beautiful snake or perfect animal to start breeding off uh, as a first time animal as she's got good size to her, she's got a lot of weight to her body and that means she's got enough fat reserves to reproduce this coming season. So then on to your males. So I typically like to start off my males between anything 600 and 700 grams. It also depends on the, of the age of the males. So younger males, I'd start off around 700, 700 grams and then older snakes, which doesn't grow as fast as compared to other ones, I'd start maybe a bit smaller than 700 grams. I've actually heard some cases where males has actually started to breed at 350 grams and in my opinion, that's way too small to start off your male ball python. So my typical uh, weight region or the weight I like to have my ball pythons as proven breeders um, on the males, I like to have them between 900 grams and 1,200 grams. I feel that weight is sustainable for the male. If they get a bit more bigger than that, I feel the reproduction starts to get slower. So here we've got a pastel highway pine, and this is a perfect male to showcase what I like to have in males, um, the condition of the snake. So as you guys can see, is there's a huge difference between the male and the females. The females has got more of a girthy look and the males are a bit more slender in a sense. So as you guys can see is this snake is in perfect breeding conditions in the sense of he's not too large and he's also not too small. So this animal I'd say is around 900 grams and this is the perfect size I like to have my males. He's got enough weight to sustain himself throughout the season because sometimes the males do go off feed and it's good to have a male with a bit more size in that aspect. So as you guys can see, a beautiful animal and a great size animal to start breeding this coming season. And this is actually a multiple proven breeder male, so he's actually sired a couple of clutches for us in the past season. So he's an ideal weight this coming season to hopefully uh, breed with one or two females and also sustain himself throughout the season if he goes, goes off feed. So guys, then on to temperature. So temperature is one of the biggest factors also when it comes to breeding your ball pythons. So initially when I started off breeding ball pythons, I was actually manipulating or dropping the hotspot temperatures of the animals. But over the years, I've actually seen it's more beneficial for myself and actually for the animals as well to drop the room temperature or the ambient temperature. So non-breeding season or non-breeding times through the months September to April, I actually run my ambient uh, room temperature at 28 degrees. And in the start of April, I drop it down from 28 to 26 degrees Celsius and then at the start of May, I drop it from 26 degrees to 24 degrees Celsius. And I, what I've seen is over the years, the amount of females I pair up and the amount of females that lay clutches has actually increased a lot compared to the previous breeding method I've used. So just to say it in short quickly, 
So like I said, non-breeding times, I run my, uh, my temperatures 28 degrees. Then the start of April, I drop it from 28 to 26 degrees. And then start of May from 26 to 24 degrees. And like I said, I don't change my hotspot at all in these breeding methods. I keep my hotspot 31 degrees Celsius year round. And this has worked absolutely perfect for myself. So then on to copulation. So one of the most frequently asked questions I do get is, how many times must I pair my male ball python with my female ball python? So we like to pair them every third or fourth week. So basically once a month we like to pair the male to the female. And anything more than that, in my opinion, actually is a wastage in a sense. So I've actually tracked the female's follicle development over the years and I've seen typically the females grow one centimeter follicle size uh, per month. So one copulation per month is more than efficient for your females. And then another case, it's not actually to do with how can you say how many times to pair them up. But let's say for instance you've got a male that doesn't start breeding right away. You can always switch him to different females to entice his breeding uh, behavior. But yeah, that's it all what we're going to say from copulation. Let's go check out the last and final aspect, feeding. Okay guys, then the last aspect or factor when you breed your ball python is feeding. So with regards with feeding, there's not a lot that we can say about it. But what I want to tell you guys is once your females, well, after your females had a couple of copulation and once they start with their follicle development, the females normally generally go through a, through a feeding frenzy. So what this basically means is your female will have a more aggressive feeding behavior and they will actually have more, how can you say, um, need of wanting food so in these times i like to feed actually my females a bit more i'd give them an extra meal or actually try and feed them twice a week instead of feeding once this allows the female just to put up a bit more size before she actually lays a clutch of eggs and then guys a lot a last thing i want to discuss with you guys which doesn't typically happen quite often but we do sometimes uh, experience these situations. So let's say you've got a female that is sexually mature, but she isn't the right breeding weight yet. Normally to get those females, I can say, to feed a bit better and also get a bit more size onto them, after having one copulation, this also normally sometimes entices their feeding response and sometimes help them uh, add a bit more size towards the end of breeding season. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, just a short video explaining a bit about the process of what important aspects and factors of uh, breeding your ball pythons. Um, actually this coming season we're going to try and go with a female, one particular female throughout when we start pairing up and as she develops her follicles until the day she lays a clutch of eggs. And also we're going to show you guys how a, a feeding starts to entice and also a general behavior starts to changing, especially when the females are closer to ovulation, they also go through a drastic change regarding uh, coloration and also, you know, how the female reacts in a cage itself. If you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and also leave down a comment down below what videos you guys would like to see in the future. But that's it from us at RFC for this video and we'll see you in the next one.